Now, we're working on getting this building up here. When we get this building going, then I need to have what's, what comes next. Anybody know? Huh? I got to have some doors and windows, don't I? Okay, this is my doors and windows guy right here. This is my doors and windows guy right here. Now, after my doors and windows guy, then I, I need to have a painter, and then I got to have a roofer. Is that right? Is that right? Now, I'm going to need a Finnish plumber and a Finnish electrician. Is that right? Uh huh. Then I'm going to need somebody who's going to be able to take care of the yard. I got to be able to put the landscaping in. Did I miss anything? Huh? I, I'm, I'm doing all right. Now, and, 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 and when I get all of that done, I've got to have a general contractor, and then I've got to have an owner. Is everybody together? All right, now, what we're doing is building a house. Now, if the guy who's doing the site preparation doesn't get the place together, the guy who is the owner ain't going to have nothing to stand on. Is that right? If the guy who is going to put up the, what are you doing? The drywall, then we're not going to have anything to look at, nowhere to hang up the pictures and nothing like that. Is that right? So all I'm trying to say here as you look at my team is that I need all of them working together to make a house. Now, if the electrician and the plumber get in a fight with each other, then the contractor is going to have to fire the both of them. I need Sabbath school. I need AY. I need personal ministries. I need women's ministries. I need singles ministries. I need deacons. I need deaconess. I need youth. I need children. I need music. I need musicians. I need to have an army of builders who will help build a kingdom for God. Paul said, somebody puts water on the ground, somebody puts seed in the ground, but God supplies the, the harvest. It is time we come to understand that everybody here has a part to play. Now, let me be clear about something. Some of these jobs are bigger than others. Some of these jobs require an intelligence level that is higher and more significant than others. Just because somebody, okay, no, well, stay right there. Just because you, you, you may have to have a greater intelligence to do your job does not make you better than the person who needs less intelligence to do their job. Is somebody still here with me? Listen to me. Just because you can sing does not give you then the reason to ridicule those who sing less than you do. Those of you who have great memory, you can see something one time and remember it. Then you've got to be patient with the person who says, I can't remember that, so I have to bring my notes with me. Somebody asked me one time, how do you preach a sermon without notes? Well, I got 22 pages worth right here. Sometimes I can remember everything that's in it, and then sometimes you, you, I have to... Wait a minute. <laughs> now, what page was that? And then, so you'll see the top of my head because I'm busy trying to read it and I just couldn't remember it today. But whether I read it or spoke it, does it make the power of the message less prolific? Absolutely not. Because if it is a word from God, then how it is delivered and by whom it is delivered is not as relevant as that it is delivered. We just went through a bruising campaign to do homecoming. We got wounded everywhere. Let's bind them up. Let's pour oil on the wounds. Let's bring them water and bread and whatever they need and sit with them until they get their strength back. But then let us put our arms around one another. Come back to the altar. Stand before God and receive our new marching orders. Because this thing ain't over yet. The Bible says, in yet a little while, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. But he ain't here yet. He hasn't come yet. And because he hasn't come yet, our work is not done. I'm talking to somebody. 
I know that you might not have agreed with all the votes that were taken, but that's why we have discussion, and that's why we take votes so that we have a democratic process. And when the process is done, we join our arms together and we move forward under the bloodstained banner of Christ. Somebody say amen. Somewhere here in my notes, it tells me that every discussion does not always bring a unanimous decision. But beloved, why should it? If God has made us of many nations to be one nation, then there will be many opinions in the discussion. Is that not reasonable? What makes us the born again children of God is that we come to one accord in one place so that the site preparer does what the site preparer needs to do and then gets out of the way so the pest control guy can do what pest control does and he gets out of the way so the rough end guys and the foundation people can do what they do and they get out of the way so the framers and the drywall hangers and the carpenters can do what they do and they get out of the way so the windows and doors can be put in and ultimately the inhabitant moves into the house I got a word to share with you as if I hadn't already done that Jesus is coming I want to go to heaven when Jesus comes We've all had fun with that little YouTube. Ain't nobody got time for that. This stuff that keeps us distracted, ain't nobody got time for that. This stuff, somebody called me on the phone and said they heard. Awesome. Yeah, and then they told me I also heard. Ain't nobody got time for that. Somebody called me on the phone and said, yeah, 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 Pastor, they, they called me and told me, you going to stand there and let them do that to you? Ain't nobody got time for that. Somebody called me and say, well, Pastor, that was great, but couldn't we have done this? And could Yes, we could have if we had caught that train, but that wasn't the train we caught. We caught this train right here, and it's the one that brought us where we are, and by the grace of God, we stand up and testify how good God is that he delivered me to this moment and this time on the train he brought me in on. Thirty years ago, I marched into... The dealership turned in my Buick and bought a Mercedes Benz because I thought that's what I wanted. And I had four more after that. Today, I drive a Lincoln. I'm not interested in Mercedes. Unless you're going to give me one. Now, if you're going to give me one, I'll take it. What am I saying? I come to understand that just because it worked yesterday, Oh, I'm trying to talk to somebody. Just because it worked yesterday doesn't necessarily mean it's the vehicle I ride in today. <sighs> I read the history of our church. I want y'all to sit down, but if you sit down, I'm going to lose my point, so y'all stay standing, okay? <laughs> God will reward you. Listen, listen, listen. I read the history of the church, and I read how the church came from a little bitty group in 1800 and something or the other, and, and then it broke apart, and then it was organized again, and then it moved over here, and then it moved over there, and then it built a building, and it got too small, and it built another building. Then they marched from Paramo over here, and they filled it up. And I remember when Mount Sinai was uh, Orlando personified. Well, we ain't Orlando personified no more. People don't come here just to see us anymore. But the work that we had to do over 100 years ago is the same work we have to do today. Some plant, some water, but God gives the increase. Look at the text. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, I as a wise master builder have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Next verse. And here comes it, and I'm going to sit down. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, and that is Christ Jesus. If what we do is about what we want people to think about us. 
then we have wasted their time and ours. If what we do is about how to magnify Christ, he said in John, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Paul said the message and the gospel is about Jesus Christ and him crucified. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners who plunge beneath that flood lose their guilty stains. That is the direction we take to the world. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. But I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of love all sinners were slain. Jesus died so that a wretch like me could have an opportunity for the kingdom. Jesus died so that when he delivers me, then I can in turn tell somebody, look and see what God has done for me. I'm so glad 